Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. faithful there is none like you lord thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus woody 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 are you lord god i worship you lord i worship you lord you are mighty you are mighty you are mighty you are glorious Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We magnify your name. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my Father. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Who is like unto you? There is none like you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ancient of days, we thank you. I am that I am. We thank you. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Who is like unto you? There is none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Be that exalted. Be that exalted. Be that glorified. Yes, it's a glorious day. It's a day of. It's a blessed day. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. This is altar of prayer fellowship. We welcome you all. We welcome you all. God bless you, my evangelist. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. What is the topic of our discussion today? Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Father, we thank you for this word that we are about to hear right now. I yield myself totally to you. Speak through me today. Empty me and refill me with your word, with your fire, with your power. Cover this program with the blood of Jesus. As many that will be joining us on this life program, Lord, touch their soul. Let this word of life touch them. That they will not only be hearer, but doer of your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I welcome you all. Yes, this is a altar of prayer fellowship. Coming to you live. You are all welcome. God bless you as you come. Please share and invite. Yes, we have a important discussion today. Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Because they will rend it and come back to you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. 
We worship him. We adore him. Yes. Do not give what is holy to the dogs because they will come back around you by the time they are done with it. The word of God is holy. The word of God is holy. And God expects every one of us to be holy. He said, be ye holy for I, the Lord, is holy. But today, what is the position of today's church? It's very alarming. It's so pathetic. The position of today's church. First and foremost, what is church? Church is you. Church is me. The church the Lord desire is you, is me. Not the beautiful buildings we see these days, not the edifices, not the cathedrals. You are the church. I am the church. And that is why he told Peter, Upon you I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That is the word the Lord commanded. That is the commandment of God to us. He said he will build us. He will guide. He will polish. He will nourish us. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. But what is going on today? The deplorable state of righteousness in today's church is very pathetic. The deplorable state of holiness in today's church is alarming. What do we hear today in, in, in churches? Today's church has become a place of entertainment, an entertainment ground, a gambling center, a cash and carry association where people go there to exchange the word of God for money. Is that what the Lord actually make, came to die for? The Lord came to die for the church so that he can come and rapture the church. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. But what is going on today in today's church is alarming. Yes, today's church, it is alarming. That is why we all need to know this word for ourselves. That is why we all know, need to know this word for ourselves. We don't need to depend on doctrine you must know jesus by his word anywhere you do not hear these righteous messages message of holiness as commanded by our lord jesus christ because that is what you need right now to nourish your soul we are in the last days the era of going to church to listen to entertainment is over the era of going to church to listen to Drama is over. The era of going to church to listen to English is over. The era of going to church to watch magic on the pulpit is over because that is where they have pharaoh magicians right now on the pulpit. That is why every one of us must wake up. We must all wake up. Do not give the holy things to the dogs. The Lord was speaking in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. The Lord is speaking to every one of us. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. He said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pears before swine, lest they trample them under their feet. And turn again and rend you. Turn again and rend you. Now, let me read New Living Translation so that we can understand better. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. This is the word of the Lord to every one of us today. This is the word of the Lord to every one of us today. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. He said, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't waste, do not waste what is holy 
unto people who are unholy. Keep, he said, do not waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pears to the pigs. They will trample the pears. Then turn and attack you. Sorry, let me reduce this message. Sorry, I want to reduce the music. So that we can hear this, this message is proper. Yes. He said, according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. May the Lord bless you. Oh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Pardon me. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pears to the pigs. They will trample the pears. Then turn and attack you. They will trample the pears and turn and attack you. According to the word of the Lord. Sorry. Excuse me, just... Yes, you are all welcome. God bless you all. Sister Monica, Sister Jane. Yes, God bless you, Sister Maureen. You are all welcome. Please share, invite people. It's a very, it's a, it's a very important discussion. Interesting. Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter seven, verse six. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pears to pigs. They will trample the pears, then turn and attack you. Don't throw your pears to the pig. So when they are done with it, they will turn and attack you. What do we mean by holy things? Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. This is the word of God. The word of God is holy. That is what the Bible tells us in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. That the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. This is a holy book. And it is expected for you to digest it and learn what is on it. It is expected of you to digest it and learn what is on it. Not just learning it and put it into practice. That is why the Lord said, be holy for I'm holy. That is why Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, it is make peace with all men, holiness without which you cannot see God. I cannot see God. Our God is holy. On that day you are going to stand right before Jesus Christ. How you live your, your life on earth here determines where you are going to. How you live your life on earth here determines where you are going to. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the kind of doctrine they are feeding you with right now. It doesn't matter what they are telling you right now. But it is a personal journey. Salvation is personal. You must work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You don't have to go with the crowd. You don't have to go with the, with, with the church members. You don't have to go with with pastor's doctrine that is not in line with this word of God. It doesn't matter who that pastor is. It doesn't matter his name. It doesn't matter his position. It doesn't matter his status. It doesn't matter. What matters before God is your holy and righteous work. That is why Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his righteousness. Then every other thing will be added unto you. Every other thing will be added unto you. You must see God first, his kingdom first. His kingdom is your salvation. And you start walking your righteous, your, you start working out your holy and your righteous work with him. Before every other thing can enter, before every other thing can drop, before every, every other thing can follow. But today's church, they have, they have brought, it is, it is materialism first. They use the message of prosperity to bring people to the church. J Jesus Christ said, It is in all written that my father's house shall be called house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. No, it is not like that. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, because they will trample on it and come back to you. 
This is the topic we are bringing to you today. What are we talking about? That ministry, that office you are occupying, it is not a man-made office. It is not, you, you never got that office based on your qualification, based on your education, or based on your riches. No. That office is not a man-made office. We have fivefold ministries. There are fivefold ministries. And the Lord is looking for holy people to occupy these offices. Yes, the Lord is looking for holy people to occupy these offices. Fivefold ministries. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. And the Lord desire holy people to occupy this office. This this is not office that you you qualify by 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 your money, by your riches, or by your status, by your earthly status. No, it is a spiritual office ordained by God Himself. It is a spiritual office ordained by God Himself. So for you to occupy that office, you must be qualified before God, not man. You must be qualified before God. There are fivefold ministries. There are fivefold ministries that the Lord Jesus Christ has given unto man to, to spread this gospel of holiness and righteousness. He did not give you that office to make money. He did not give you that office to amount wealth for yourself. He did not give you that office to enrich your pocket. He did not give you that office to, to become famous. That office, it is for the edification of the church. It is to train men. It is to tell them the word of truth and the word of life. It is to rebuke, to correct. To correct the children of God. And to point the way of the cross to them. That is what that office is all about. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. Ephesians chapter 4, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. He gave, the, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. This is the word of God coming to every one of us today. This is office that the Lord is looking for holy men to occupy. Do not give that holy thing to the dogs. Do not give that holy thing to the people, to the unholy people. And when you look at, when, when you go before these verses, you go a little, a little bit backward. Let's start from, you go back Let's start from verse, four, verse 7, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. The gift and the calling of God is without repentance. Everyone that is called is given a gift. So even when the person is falling out of faith, that gift is never retrieved back. That gift is not taken back. Because the Lord does not withdraw his gift. That is why a lot of them today, they are going astray without them knowing it, that they are falling out of the way of God. That is why a lot of them today, they are going astray without them knowing it. You must know this. The gift and the calling of God is without repentance. Now he ascended, I mean verse 9, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9. Now he, now that he ascended, what is it? But for that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. That he might feel all things. Yes, that is the topic. Do not give, do not give that 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 which is holy to the dogs. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers to do what? Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Jesus Christ, for the perfecting of the saints, 
for the work of the ministry, to perfect the saints, not for the enrichment of the people, not for the riches of the soul. I am not against prosperity, but the very fact that we now put this before the, the true message, it is, it, is, it is so sad. It is pathetic that we now place prosperity materialism messages first before the, your calling. Before your calling, that office was given to you, one, to perfect the saints, to train them in the way of the Lord, to show them that narrow path, that lead to eternal life, to rebuke them of whatsoever that they are doing that does not glorify God, to correct them of their ways, and to remind them of where their souls are heading to. This is why you are occupying that office. This is the reason you are occupying that office. This is your, your primary assignment. This is your primary assignment. Yes. What is the purpose of that your calling? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. You are called to begin to preach this word that we perfect the children of God. For the work of the ministry. What is the work of what what office are you occupying? Is it evangelism? You have to spread. An evangelist move from one area, one location to another. Is it pastoral office? You preach the truth. Is it apostolic office? Is it prophetic office? A prophet of those days. When they are coming, everybody is shaking in those days. When prophet Elijah, prophet Elisha, prophet Ezekiah, prophet Isaiah, once they are coming, people are already fidgeting because they knew they would come to deliver God's verdict, whether good or bad. They are, they were God's mouthpiece. Anyone that occupy a prophetic office, you are supposed to be God's mouthpiece. You are supposed to be known by the word of God. The truth, the truth, not the office, not the office of, of the prophet we have today that are into money. Any prophet you see, they bring money first. They bring money first for you to sow before they start prophesying onto, onto, onto your life. The office of a prophet is is the mouthpiece of God. They come to deliver the truth according to the word of God, according as they are sent. They come to warn the people. They come to warn the, the community. They come to warn the society. They come to warn people of their evil ways. They come to warn people to desist from their evil ways. They come to warn people of the calamity that will befall them if they don't stop their wicked ways. That is a prophetic office, not as it is nowadays. Prophetic office is they, they, they release blessing and they expect you to start paying paper and cash up. That office is now being abused. Anybody you see right now is a prophet. Prophet of what? Prophet of what? Are you prophet of God or prophet of your own belly? That is the question we are asking everybody. Are you prophet of God or prophet of your own self? Are you called of God or you call yourself? Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Do not profane the word of God. Do not desecrate the, the altar of God. Do that which you have been assigned to do. Do not deviate to the left. Do not deviate to the right. Do not deviate to the left. Do not deviate to the right. Do not add or subtract. Do not dilute the word of God. Do not water down the truth. That is why I say the deplorable state of righteousness in today's church is alarming. There is no more truth in today's church. There is no word. The message of holiness and righteousness is now being suppressed in today's church. 
because they have brought worldliness into the church of Jesus Christ. They have brought worldliness into the church of Jesus Christ. They have brought materialism into the church of Jesus Christ. It is now an entertainment ground, a den of thieves, a place where they parade all sorts in the society, where they now gamble on the word of God. What is happening in today's church? Let us be wise. Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. So says the word of God. Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. There are fivefold ministries, just like as I said. Verse 12 says, verse 11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all come in the unity of faith and on the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the state of of the fullness of Christ. This office is given to you to rebuke, to correct, to instruct people unto righteousness. It's not for your pocket. It's not to enrich yourself. It's not to acquire private jets. It's not to acquire luxurious cars. It's not to it's not to flaunt your designer wares. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he walked. He walked on the street of the earth. Anywhere he was called upon, he would volunteer to go. Notwithstanding, he was, a, he was God that came in the form of man. He would follow members. Anyone that came to call him, he followed. He never, he never, they never stop people from seeing Jesus. They never feel from, from seeing Jesus. They never paid consultation fee before they, they saw Jesus. They never donated cars before they saw Jesus. They never gave thousands of dollars before they, they saw Jesus. He saw both rich and poor. He met both the, the sick and the healthy people because he came to show us what we must do as disciples. So why are these offices desecrated today? Why are these offices profane today? That is the question we are asking everyone this morning. Do not give that which is holy unto the dogs because they will, they will trample upon it just like as it is today in today's church because they have misused their offices. That is why you cannot differentiate a believer and unbeliever today because they have misused their offices. That is why you cannot differentiate a Christian and a pagan today. You do not know the difference. You do not know the difference. Why? Because they have turned the body of Jesus Christ to an association, a, 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 an, association an association body. A place where they just come and joke. A place where they come to know the, the, what is trending in the fashion world. A place where they come to look at people's dressing. That is why you see today, you, you hardly differentiate a Christian and not Christian. That is not what the Lord desire his these offices to be, is to rebuke, is to correct people. Let us all wake up. A perfect example of this that we are going to be looking at is Eli and his sons. Eli was a priest. He was occupying a priestly office, but he made his sons priests as well. Were they, uh, were they ordained as priests? Did God command him to make his sons priests? That is how it is today. Because church has become a business, once they are there, they put wives and children in as nest of kin to, to, to take over that office. That is a spiritual office. That is a spiritual office, not a secular word. God chooses, he ordains whoever he wants in that office. That is a spiritual office that must be spiritually occupied by people that are spiritually qualified. 
That is a spiritual office that must be spiritually occupied by people that are spiritually qualified. You don't put your son in your place when you are when you when you are gone in that church. Church is not a business. Church is not a secular organization. Church it is a God ordained office for spiritual people. For spiritual people. That is why you must be very careful because whatsoever you sow, you will definitely reap it. Whatsoever you sow, you definitely reap it. The word of God. You cannot, you cannot compromise and go free. No. The word of God can never, can never return to his void. He said heaven and earth shall pass away, but a jot of his word can never pass away. This is what we must know today. This is what we must know today. This is what we must know today. First, first Samuel chapter 2. First Samuel chapter 2. Let's start from verse 11. First Samuel chapter 2. Who was Eli? And what happened to his sons? They were never called to occupy that priestly office. You know? But somewhere, uh, Eli made them so, without the consent of God. And they began to, to rent holy things into pieces. Because their father gave them that which is, their father made them to occupy a holy place. Where, me, why, why they were not holy. Their father made them to occupy a holy position. That is why he said, do not give that which is holy to the dogs. They were not qualified. First Samuel chapter 2. Let me start from verse 11. Then I cannot return home to Rama without Samuel. And the boy served the Lord by assisting Eli, the priest. Let me just give a little intro before we go to the, to the sons of Eli. Samuel was a child of covenant. Hannah was his mother. Hannah was married to Ekana and he had and she had a mate called Penina. Hannah was not never had any any child, but Penina had children. So they were they were always mocking her. So a time came that she was fed up, she had it to her neck, and she went to Shiloh to make a vow in her heart. Oh Lord, if you can give me a male child, I promise to return him to you. I will give him back to you in return. This is a vow that I make it today. That was what Hannah did. And Razor will not enter his hair. So for those of you that are doing dreadlocks today, that is how it came about. It's not, it's not a fashion. Hannah made a vow to the Lord that Razor will not enter the hair of uh, Samuel. And the Lord heard her in her secret tears. The Lord heard her and Hannah became pregnant. So she gave birth to a, a, a boy as she as she desired. And she named and they named him Samuel. So she returned that boy according to her words. How many of us have vowed today, but we don't do it? She prom she returned Samuel to the temple according to her words. Now Eli had two sons, Hophna and Phineas. Allah made them a priest while they were never qualified while they were not qualified to be priest. Allah made them priest. Meanwhile, they were not qualified to be priest. And they started occupying that priestly office. But they misused that office because they never knew what it takes to be a priest. They never knew what it took to be a priest. So they misused that office as it is today. The office of the Lord is not being misused. The fivefold ministries, their offices are not being misused. Because a lot of them, they call themselves, God did not call them. And let us go there. First Samuel chapter 2, starting from verse 12. Now the, the, the sons of Eli were scoundrels who had no respect for the things of the Lord. They were scoundrels. 
King James said they were sons of Belial. They had no respect for the office because they, they never knew what it took to be a priest. Their father just made them one, just like as it is today. Just like as it is today. Go and check all these baby churches. Go and check who they are making pastors. A froster, they make that a pastor. Arm robbers who are not who are not fully consecrated, who are not fully sanctified, who are not fully indoctrinized in the word of God. They made them, they make them pastors. That is why you see the word is, is has gradually creeped into the body of Jesus Christ. That is why you see the word has been brought. The things of the word is not in, in the churches. That is why you see worldly dance, worldly music, worldly dressing, worldly everything. It's not in the body of Jesus Christ. Because of all these sons of billion that have infiltrated the body of Jesus Christ. No. From the one. It was never so. It was never so from the one. Eli sons occupy the office of priest. And the Bible says they have no respect for the things of God. Oh, he said for the now verse 13. Or oh, for their duties as priests, they had no respect for God. They had no respect for all oh, for their office as priests. They didn't, they don't, they, they did not care. It doesn't, they didn't care at all. It, they, they, they never cared to even minister the word to the people. They never cared to cancel people. They never cared to pray for people. All they did was to steal from people. They took their meat. They, they steal from them. And they started assaulting women. They started molesting women in the temple. Exactly what we have today in today's church. Yes. That is, that is what we have today in today's church. Why am I bringing this picture? Exactly what is going on today in today's church. This is what you get when you are under a man that was never called by God. This is the kind of experiences we have when you are under a pastor that was never called by, by, God, by God, but called himself because of material, because of personal lust. He called himself. Today's church, a lot of a lot of pastors right now are into occultism. A lot of pastors right now are into demonism. A lot of pastors right now they are into ritual rit rituals. That is where you see them, they bury pregnant women in their altars. That is why they do charms, all sorts of charms in their altar. That is why you see them, they look for virgins, they hunt for virgins here and there that they are they have been asked to sleep with daily. It's so unfortunate that the people, the congregations are hypnotized, the congregation are oppressed, are demonically oppressed. They don't see this because they are spiritually blinded. That is why you should be careful. The place where you worship. We are not saying this because we want to make ourselves popular. You must be spiritually sensitive and spiritually alert in these last days. We're in the last days. Bible says in the last days, men will fall out of faith. We're in the, we're in the last days, so you must be very careful. Who you, who you worship under, who lay hands on you, and who can sell you. You must be very careful because we're in the last days. We are in the last days. Let us be very careful. Office of a prophet, office of a pastor, office of an evangelist, office of a teacher, office of an apostle. Do we still really have them like the days of old? Has God changed? They tell you we are in the 21st century, we are in the modern day. Has heaven upgraded? Is heaven modernized? Don't we still serve the same God of yesterday, today, and forevermore? He told Moses, I am that I am, is his name. He changeth not. So whether you are in time and season, 
don't has nothing to do with God. That is why God is not a man. The fact that they have desecrated, they have polluted the altar of God today does not make God different from who he is. His God is not a man. That is why we keep saying salvation is personal. It's a personal work. Salvation is a personal work. So do not think I because I am in a cathedral where they have five services, ten services, I am there already. No, don't think that. You are not there. When you are not qualified before God as an individual, you are not there. When you are not qualified before God as an individual, when you don't live a holy and righteous life before God, you are not there. Examine yourselves. Paul said, let us examine ourselves whether you are still in the faith or not. Examine yourself. When you give your life to God and your position right now, has anything changed from you? Has anything changed in your body? Has anything changed as an individual, as a Christian? If nothing has changed, then you need to change your place of worship. If nothing has changed, then you need to leave that place of worship. Everything about you must read Jesus. You have you you should you are supposed to have an identity of Jesus Christ. If you if you still curse as you were before you give gave your life to Jesus Christ, there is a problem. If you still smoke as you were before you gave your life to Jesus Christ, there is a problem. You are not fully consecrated. If you still fornicate. As you were before you gave your life to Jesus Christ, there is a problem. If you are still committing adultery as you were before you gave your life to Jesus Christ, there is a problem. Let us examine ourselves today. Salvation. This Christian, Christian work is an individual race. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. What are we talking about today? We are talking about giving the holy thing to the dog. Do not give that which is holy to the dog. Bible says, do not give that which is holy to the unholy people. Because they will, after they are useless, they will come back and attack you. That is what we have today in today's church. I, are you, I, I, I'm not surprised these days when you see a pastor giving a gas, gas fuel that you use in the car for members to drink. I'm not surprised when you see a pastor, they, they sleep with women all in the name of deliverance. I'm not surprised when you see a pastor putting stone, heavy load on people. They said they are, they, are, they are carrying deliverance on them because they don't know, because the people, they don't know the word of God. Because the people, they don't know the word of God. The office of a priest. Bible says, Eli's sons would send now, I am in verse 13. Whenever anyone offered a sacrifice, Eli's sons will send over a servant with a tree pronged fork. While the meat of the sacrifice animal of the sacrificed animal was still boiling, the servant will stick the fork into the pot and demand that whatever he brought up be given to Eli's sons. Now they were going according to the they were going against the customs. They were going against the customs in Israel. Whenever they came, whenever the people came to do to sacrifice, there are there are ways they do it. But because Eli sons, they were never called by God because they occupied that office wrongfully. They were doing things their own way, according to their own doctrine, according to their own belief. As it is today, a lot of men of God they have brought their personal doctrine into the body of Jesus Christ. It's not about what Jesus said. It is about what they say. It's not about what Jesus said. It is about what they say. That is why you have to be careful in your place of worship. You must be very careful. You must be very careful in your place of worship because it is it is it is alarm me right now. What is going on in the body of Jesus Christ? You must be very careful. Excuse me.
That is why we have to be very careful. Sorry, I'm just trying to. That's why we have to be very careful. And where in your place of worship? Where do you worship? What kind of messages do you hear there? Look at Eli's sons. Because their father called them into that office. They started misbehaving. They started going to people's private, private lives. When the people brought meat according to the custom to cook their their servants, we go there and pick it themselves. This is for our master. This is how our master wants it. This is how our master wants it. They tell the people, this is how our master wants it. So the people, they were not getting very uncomfortable. And Eli heard what the sons were up to, but he never did anything about it. Look at, let's, let's continue. The servant will stick the fork into the pot and damn that whatever he brought up to be given to Eli's sons. All the Israelites who came to worship Ashilo were treated this way. All the members that came to worship at Shiloh were treated this way. They were stealing from them. They were robbing them. They were attacking them. They were molesting the women. They were assaulting them sexually. That was the height of it all. As it is today, in today's church, pastors, they don't see anything wrong with that. They assault women sexually, both married and single, both, both virgin and not virgin. They assault women. As it is today in today's church, look at what Bible record here. We are in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 15. Sometimes the servant would come even before the animal's fat had been burned on the altar. He would demand raw meat before it has been boiled so that it could be used for roasting. The man offering the sacrifice might reply, take as much as you want, but the fat must be burned first. Then the servant would demand, no, give it to me now or I will take it by force. Even when the people plead, even when the people pleaded, even when the people pleaded, they would take it by force. They were invading the people's privacy as it is today in today's church. Men and fake men and fake women of God are invading into people's privacy today. They forced them to give offering, seed of all kinds. A thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, not knowing, not caring about their soul. They lie in the name of God. They blaspheme the name of God. They, they lie in the in, in the name of God that God they are hearing God say they should bring so some money. They are ripping people off. They are ripping people, they are ripping, they are ripping people off their happiness. They come, they take it by force. Without telling you what you must do to save your soul. Without telling you what you must do to save this your soul. That is how it is today. We should be very careful. We should be very, very careful. Even when the people were pleading, they would not listen. Now, look at verse 17. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 17. So the sin of this young man was very serious in the Lord's sight. For the Lord treated the Lord's offering, for they treated the Lord's offering with contempt. But Samuel, though he was only a boy, served the Lord. He wore a lining garment like that of a priest. To tell you, God is no respecter of anyone. God was saying the atrocities of Samuel's sons and of Eli's sons. But he was training Samuel to take over that office. As it is today, warning has been coming. The Lord's wrath is coming upon the disobedient and false prophet. Repent as you hear this message. Repent because he will raise children to, to take over that office. That office is never man-made office. That office is not a man-made office. So don't expect to occupy that office forever. The Lord is raising men and women. The Lord is raising the unqualified to take over those offices. The earlier you repent right now from those your evil ways, the better. He is no respecter of any man. Because he told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the role you are playing for Satan. 
the Lord will, will unseat you. The Lord will replace you. Repent right now and start preaching the word of truth. Repent right now and start telling the people what they need to do to repent from their evil ways. Not to steal people's joy. Not to steal people's happiness. Not to steal people's, people's peace with your lying summer. Not to steal people's peace with your lying summer. Repent. The earlier you repent, the better. The earlier you repent, the better. The earlier you repent, the better. Now, Samuel, though he was only a boy, served the Lord. The Bible says Samuel was serving the Lord. The Lord was training Samuel. Because the, as far as God was concerned, earlier Eli's sons were already out of it. Though they were priests, but God never made them priests. Their father made them priests. Just like as it is today, that office that you are occupying, were you called by God? You made yourself a pastor, you made yourself a bishop, you made yourself archbishop, you made yourself G.O. And you are even preparing your children to take over in the office of God. It's not your office. There are fivefold ministry. Fivefold ministry in the body of Jesus Christ. The apostle, office of the apostle, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These offices must be occupied by holy men, ordained, that are worthy, that are qualified before God, not man, not man, because men see the outward, outward appearance, but God looks at both in heart, inward and outward appearance. Yes, you might look qualified, facially, physically, but you might not be qualified before God. Yes, that is what is going on here right now. Look at people thought maybe they were going to be acting like their father, Eli. But Bible recorded that they were the sons of Belial, squandered. They never, they, the Bible says they never respected God, nor his office. They brought their own doctrine, doctrine of stealing, doctrine of assault, doctrine of assaulting women sexually. Doctrine of lying, as it is today in the body of Jesus Christ. Every man, every woman bring their own doctrine, forgetting this holy book that we stand to judge us on that day. Forgetting this holy book. Bible says this book is written by the inspiration of, of the Lord Almighty to rebrook, to reprove, to correct in righteousness. This Bible is to correct us, is to rebuke us, is to correct us, is to show us the way of righteousness. But what do we have today? It's, it's just a pity that the body of Jesus Christ has been desecrated. But do not think the Lord he will keep quiet. No. A warning is coming to everybody. A warning. God's wrath is coming soon. He will start descending upon them and God is going to replace them. God is going to replace them. Let everybody beware. You might occupy that office for a while, but you are not going to occupy, occupy it forever. The promises of God unto this generation must come to pass. He told Peter, upon you, upon the rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It doesn't matter how Satan has infiltrated the body of Jesus Christ with his agents. What we have today is that woman called Jezebel. In the, in the body of Jesus Christ, they have infiltrated it. But the Lord is raising the unqualified to, 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 to bring sanity to the, to the body of Jesus Christ. He's raising the unqualified, the, 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 the sinners, the ones that nobody expects. He's raising them. He's raising, he's raising them to bring back holiness and righteousness to the pulpit. To bring back holiness and righteousness to the pulpit. Without holiness, no soul shall see God. No man, no woman, no boy can see God. No girl. The Lord cannot compromise his word. His word is here and amen. If he could destroy the old world, the Bible recorded that the Lord regretted ever making man when he saw the wickedness that was in the world then. 
And he said, I will destroy man whom I have created. The Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. He will destroy man. He will destroy. He will. He said, the beast, every creepy thing. Did God not do it? He did it. Do not take the words of God for granted. It is not a man to learn, neither the son of man to repent. His word is here and amen. What he says he will do, he will do. That is why we are coming to tell those that are listening. The era of going to the cathedral of 10 services is over. The era of going to church that have millions of followers is over. The rare era of pointing to that man is my pastor is a man of fire and he only prophesied to the destruction of your soul is over. The era of following that man because of his lying doctrine. He lies and lies and lies to you. Let me tell you something. A lot of people are looking for where they will hear the truth right now because they are tired of such of such preaching. They hear from January to December. And their soul still remain the same. And their way of life still remain the same. That era is over. It's a personal decision right now. It's a personal journey. It doesn't matter what your yesterday was. But you can start today. It doesn't matter what you have been going through. But you can start today. It doesn't matter what you what they have told you. Or the report that they, they, they have given you. It doesn't matter. You can start today. You can amend your ways today. And seek the God of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ whom we serve. Not man. And seek Jesus whom we serve. Not man. The era of following man is over. The era of following name of church is over. Let me tell you, when you stand before Jesus Christ, the Lord will not ask you what is the name of that church. No. Bible says your, the book of life will be opened if your name is not found there. Not only will, be, will it be opened, your, everything that you have done on earth, he said you will be judged according to your works on earth. It's not according to the name of your pastor or your bishop. Not according to the name of your church. Get this on your head today. It is not by church. It is not by the name of my pastor. It is not by the name of my church. Get, get, get settled with Jesus. Get serious with Jesus. Get serious with Jesus. And the sons of Eli. Bible said they were sons of Billy. Sons of priest Eli, sons of bishop Eli, they were sons of Billy. They were, they never knew God nor regarded his word, but they were occupying a priestly office. That office that you are occupying today, are you actually called by God? If you are called by God, where is the fear of God in you? Where is the fear of God in you? That you care less about people's souls. That you care less about people's souls. All you are interested in, it is what they are able to offer. How many people have you put in that position? Deacon, deacon and deaconesses. Are they qualified? Or because of you have looked at the way they are donated to the church? You are putting them in that position? All those your pastors, are they really qualified to be pastors? Or because you have become, they have made, you have become a, a godfather to them. They are remitted to you. They are remitted to you even when they lie. You careless. This is the word of God coming to you this morning. This is the word of God coming to every one of us this morning. What are we talking about? We are still in the sons of Eli. Today's topic, do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Do not give that which is holy to the pigs. Bible says they will trap it, they will finish, they will eat it all, and they will turn to you and rend you. That is what today's church is all about. That is what today's church is all about. You need to see the state of today's church. Hey, Lord have mercy. The deplorable state of righteousness in today's church is pathetic. There is no more truth in today's church. There is no more truth in today's church. Why? Why? 
Are we taking this God, the forbearance of God for granted? Are we taking the patience of God for granted? Or do we think God no more exists? If you exist, if you have the breath in you, know that God exists. Because this breath, you don't buy it. You don't, you, you, you don't work for it. You sleep, you wake up, and you are alive. You think it's just like that? God exists. If you can still see the sun, the moon, and the stars, know that God exists. If you can see all these things, then know that the word of God can never return to him void. He said he would destroy man. And the creepy things he did during Noah's days. When the last days we are going again, Jesus Christ is coming, so he's coming not as we he came. He's coming with fire. He's coming with fire. If you know you are occupying that office and you have not been preaching the right one, go and go and look at the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 47. That repentance and remission of messages should be preached to all in his name. Have you been preaching your messages of repentance and remission of sins? That is the question we are asking today. Just like Eli, Eli's sons, they never gave a damn. It didn't matter what they were, all they knew. They wanted to use that office to enrich themselves. That is why they were attacking people. They stole from them the worst part that really got God angry. They started abusing women sexually. In the temple, in the temple, just like the today's atrocities. Just look at, just look, go, just go and look at what is happening today. The, 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 the altar of God has been desecrated. Ah, God is not keeping quiet. This is a warning to everyone today. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, we are in verse 20. Before the return of Eli would bless Ekana and his wife and say, May the Lord give you other children to take. Let's go to verse 22. Now, Eli was very old. Imagine, Eli has been a priest for how many years? All his years, all his years, he spent it in the household of God. He spent it as a priest, ministering to God. But all that he ever worked, all that he labored for, his sons came to take it away. His sons came to take it away. Bible said, now, Eli was very old. But he was aware of what his sons were doing to the people of Israel. He knew, for instance, that his sons were seducing the young women when assisted, who assisted at the entrance of the tabernacle. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Eli knew what his sons they were doing. Women that came to clean the church. Women that came to, to decorate the church. Women that came to minister to, to God in the church. They were assaulting them sexually. Sons of Eli. Eli said to them, I have been hearing reports from all the people about the wicked things you are doing. Why do you keep sinning? You must stop, my sons. The reports I hear among the lost people are not good. If someone sin against another person, God can meditate, mediate for the guilty party. But if someone sin against the Lord, who can intercede? But Eli's sons wouldn't listen to their father, for the Lord was already planning to put them to death. For the Lord was already planning to put them to death. Did you hear what the father told the sons? Why do you do, why do you engage in such wicked acts? Don't you know that if you fall into the hands of a bad person, God can rescue you? Don't you know that if you fall into the hands of the enemy, even Satan, God can rescue you? But when you fall into the hands of God, who can rescue you? That is, the, that is just the, the truth. That is why Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. It is a fearful thing. Because no, no force, no power, no man can rescue you from the hands of God. No man can rescue you from the hands of God. 
That is why the Lord is warning everyone today. And I told the sons, desist, son. Desist from your wicked ways. We parents, we see our children engage in so many things. Do we actually talk to them? How do you talk to your children as mother, as father, as pastor? How do we talk to our children? Do you see them doing things that is not of God and you are keeping quiet, saying they are old enough? No. No. Whatsoever you do, the Lord is watching you. Do you rebuke them? Even when you see them with the wrong set of people, do you rebuke them? Even when you see them walking naked, do you rebuke them? Even when you see them with things that are not godly, do you rebuke them? You see your children coming with tattoo all over. Do you open Bible to show them what the Lord said concerning tattoo? And I told the children, do not fall into the, it is a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of God because he, your father, cannot even rescue you. When you fall into the hands of God, your soul is damned. That is what invariably he was telling them. When you fall into the hands of God, your souls are damned. You are going straight to hell. No man can rescue you. No mercy will be available because God himself is angry with you. The Lord told the sons, desist. Stop that. Stop that which you are doing. But they refused. Bible says the Lord had in their hearts because the Lord wanted to destroy them. Imagine. What was the essence of Eli being a priest for years? Eli was over 80, very old. And he has been a priest from his youth. And these were his only sons, two children, Phineas and Hophni. Now, what was his essence of living? Because the Lord said he was going to destroy them. The Lord said he was going to destroy them because they desecrated the, 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 the office of a priest. They abused that office. They rebelled against God through that office. They assaulted women using that office. They robbed people of their joy, of their blessings through that office. They attack people through that office. They threaten people through that office. You pastor, you apostle, you prophet. I don't know. You, you call yourself a prophet. How are you occupying that office? You are using that office to rip people, to rip people off their joy. You are using that office to rip people off their peace. By lying in the name of Jesus. You are using the name of God to lie. You are using the name of God to rip them off financially. You are using the name of God to rip them off spiritually. You are using the name of God to rip them off. How are you using that? You think God is not seeing you. God is seeing you. Be one today. Be one today. And license, they were misusing that office, not knowing the plan God had for them. Our God is a very long suffering God, patient, but it is a fearful thing to fight to the eat of his hands. Everything we do today, he is watching. Bible says it is only fools that say there is no God. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. Everything you do is in the eyes of God. That is why as Christians, how we relate, how we, our, our character speaks more than this Bible. Our character speaks more than this Bible. How you relate with people matters. What you say to people matters. What comes out of your mouth? How do you relate with people in your office? Do you compromise as a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ? 
Do you compromise? Do you usually compromise? You are very quick to compromise because you don't want to lose your job. How do you relate in your office, in your environment, in your home? In your home? Daniel refused, he said, Daniel refused to eat the food. He said he do not want to defy his body. He refused. He refused to eat the, the, the food from the king's table. He, he doesn't want to defy his body. He requested for his for his own and it, it was given to him. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They refused to bow down to the gods, to the to, to the idol of King Nebuchadnezzar. They, they told him they don't mind. If they die, they, they die. It doesn't matter. I was looking at Facebook last week. I saw in Fox News where little children, I don't know which, which country is that one again, 14 years, how many, four of them or so, they were beheaded for not renouncing their Christian faith. They were beheaded by all these Islamic and uh, whatever terrorists. It grieved my soul. And it made me, I learned from it. I said, look at these little children, 14 years. It, it, it is not, it, they were not compared to. It wasn't their father. It wasn't their, their mother that told them to do what they did. It wasn't their parents that told them not to renounce. They stood on the, on the word of God. They said, even if they die, let them die. But they will not renounce their faith in Christ Jesus. The days are coming. The days are coming where Christians will be tossed here and there. The days are coming where Christians will be running heta scatter. Hey, you know, just that a lot of people right now are so blinded by the things that they are hearing on the pulpit that they don't even know, they don't even care to know who they are in Christ Jesus. Because you go, they tell you, you entertain yourself, you dance, you make noise. Hey, 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 you think Christianity is all is, 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 is just what it takes? That is what Christianity is all about. <laughs> it's a personal journey. It's a personal journey. It's a journey of self-sacrifice. It's a journey of self-denial. They said, if you love me, if you want to be my disciple, want to be my follower, deny yourself and pick your personal cross and follow me. A time is coming. When the true Christians will be denied of, will be denied in shopping malls. A time is coming when the true followers of Jesus Christ will be denied access in so many places. Whether they tell you this in your church, know this today, because it's in the Bible. It's here. You don't read. Go and read, go and read the book of Matthew chapter 24 from beginning to the end. Go and read that book and hear the word of Jesus Christ in the last days. In the last days. So let us all get ready. Let us all get ready. We're in the last days. Yes, just like what we were saying. And did God carry, did, did God carry out his word? Yes, he did. One day a man of God came. In First Samuel chapter two, verse twenty-seven, one God, one day, a man of God came to Ella and gave him this message from the Lord: "I reveal myself to your ancestors when the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt. I close your ancestors, Aaron. I chose your ancestor Aaron from among the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer sacrifices on my altar, to burn incense, and to wear the priestly vest." And he served me, and I assigned this sacrificial offering to you priests. Now the Lord is telling him how the story started, how the history began. Right from his ancestor Aaron, he said, I left this office. I left this office for you, for this generation, for, Eli's, uh, for Aaron's generation. I left this office to be occupied. 
or Eli's generation, uh, Aaron's generation, he started telling him the history, the genealogy. That is God for you. God has every one of us report. He knows everything about you. Even what will happen tomorrow that you don't even know. He knows it. He knows our ending from our beginning. He started telling him. He said, therefore, yes, verse 29, so why design the sacrifice offerings to you, priest? Verse 29, so why do you scorn my sacrifices and offerings? Why do you give your sons more honor than you give me? For you and they have become fat from the best offering of my people Israel. Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel says, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi would always be my priest, but I will honor those who honor me. I will despise those who think light, lightly of me. The time is coming when I will put an end to your family, so it will no longer serve as my priest. All the members of your family will die before their time. Nor will, it, nor will reach old age. You will watch with envy as I pour out prosperity on the people of Israel. But no members of your family will ever live out their days. But no members of your family will ever live out. Those who survive will live in sadness and grief, and their children will die a violent death. And to prove that I have said it, I have said it will come true. I will cause your two sons, Hophni and Phineas, to die on the same day. Say, God forbid, but you see the you, you see the consequences. You see the verdict. The Lord said, I make I'm I made this office start from the days of Aaron, my servant. I reserve this office, this priestly office, for the those that he chose to, those that he ordained himself. But you put your sons there by yourself. Now look at what they have brought curse upon the generation. Generation, he said, Eli's family, we beg, we beg to feed, we beg to eat. He said, none of them will live to to an old age, just like as a lot of them they have desecrated the pulpit of Jesus Christ today in today's church. The Lord is angry. The Lord is angry. You know when you are saying it, they feel we are exaggerating or maybe we don't know what we are saying. The Lord keeps a record of everything and he's a very patient God. He was patient to see perhaps if they would repent, but they, ne they never repented. And he released his verdict upon this generation. He said to prove that his word will come to pass. Your sons, Hophni and Phineas, Hophni and Phineas, they will die and they actually died. And that in he, Eli at his old age died died woefully, died pitiably. Eli did not die a peaceful death. When he heard that the ark was taken, he broke his neck and he died. That is the result of disobedience on the part of Jesus Christ. I don't know who is hearing my voice today. Don't think we are coming here to scare you with this message. No. It's just a warning from God. A lot of people do not like messages like this but they like being they like being deceived they like messages that come with sweet words they like being lied to oh i could have come and said i see you being blessed today yes the lord is sending is sending your gift to you to your house this week you are getting a car key you are getting an alert in your bank of course this place will be full i will have how many thousands of followers but I am lying. But I will be lying. I'm not saying the Lord cannot bless you. Before the Lord can bless you, you must live according to how he desires you to live. You must live according to the way he desires you to live. That is why he's called holy. His name is holy. He is holy. His word is holy. His spirit is holy. That is why we have Holy Spirit. The Lord is holy. He cannot behold sin. He cannot behold iniquity. That is why he said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That is why he said, Without holiness, no man shall see God. How holy are you? How holy am I? That is the question we are asking every one of us today. 
In as much as the, there, is, there is the other side of God. But there are blessings. There are blessings from God too. Eli's children were destroyed. His generation was cursed. But have you bothered to know what happened to Abraham's generation? Abraham's generation was blessed. Abraham's generation was blessed. So the choice is yours. Before Abraham even gave birth to Isaac, the Lord already vouched. He said, I know Abraham. He will command his children to go according to my word. He will command his children according to my ways. He vouched for Abraham. Abraham was not a priest, like though he was a prophet, but he wasn't, he wasn't occupying an office like Eli. But the Lord already vouched for Abraham because he knew what Abraham could do. And he released blessings. Blessings upon blessings which we are enjoying today. That is why we are called Abrahamic seed. The seed of Abraham. That is who you are. That is who I am. The blessings of Abraham flow down to us. But Eli's generation has been cut off. That is why you don't hear anybody speak of Eli today or anything that has to do with God's blessings. As a result of his children's disobedience. As a result of his children's disobedience. So you parents, we that are preaching, pastors, what is the message that you are giving those, to those people? Or perhaps are you arranging your children to take over your office when you don't even feed them with the holy words? Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Eli gave that which is holy to the dogs and they scatter the trample upon it and they came back and it affected Eli. That is what that statement simply means. He gave that which is holy to the children. They never knew what it meant. They misused it. He got spoiled. He affected the people and he bounced back to them. He affected Eli. Eli died. The children died. The generation was written off. Was a right off. Brethren, salvation is personal. I don't know what you are going through today. I don't know where you pastor, you man of God, you woman of God, you have decided to go the, con the, 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 con the contrary. You have decided to go contrary to the word of God. Why are you not raising offerings? Why are you not selling the word of God with money? Why are you not calling people out to put money first before you pray for them? Why are they not having group of people the, that will shake the G.O. with $2,000? The one that will shake the man of God with $2,000 personally should come here. The one that will wave to a man of God with $1,000 should come here. Oh, we are we oh, we are no longer new to the to the news that is going on right now. A popular man of God that have said he has decided he has known the truth. He said he will no he will no longer preach the gospel with money attached. He said the Holy Spirit is not God is not happy for you to be asking people to bring one thousand dollars before you pray for them. He said the way he sees the Bible right now wasn't how he saw it twenty years ago. Why? Because the days you know the truth, the truth will set you free. He has seen the truth. He has seen the spirit and the life in the Bible. And he decided to start moving right, right now so that he can save his soul. He knows that his soul is on the line. Because God is no respect of any man. It doesn't matter your position on earth. It doesn't matter the the number of congregation you have on earth it doesn't matter how many private ed, how many private jets you have on earth if you don't preach this word of truth you are not in god's agenda he realized it i thank god for him and i pray for others too that others will follow suit they will follow him they will damn these consequences and come out 
are renounced. This is their false doctrine. This is their false preaching of money. The word of God is not for sale. The word of God is not for sale. We are told in Matthew 21 verse 13. When Jesus saw them selling in, his, in the temple, what did he do? He went there. He made a whip. That is God himself. Because he knows the consequences. He made a whip. And drove them out. Is it not written? Is it not written in your book? Is it not written in your law? That my house shall be called house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. You have made it a home of harlots. You have made it a home of frosters. Matthew chapter 21, verse 13. And when the chief priest scribe, verse 13, and Matthew chapter 21, verse 13. And said unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of this. A den of this. My house shall be called house of prayer, but you have made it a den of this. Den of rituals, ritualists. Den of prostitutes. And robbers. Of course, that is what they ought to, to do. You are supposed to bring all these people together first. You are supposed to bring all these people, bring them together first. Bring them together first. By the time you gather them together, then tell them the good news. Tell them the good news, the love of Jesus Christ, what they must, what, what they must do to be saved. What they ought to do to be saved. That is what this message is all about. It is not to gather them and make them to go deeper in their sin. By keeping them busy with sweet, with sweet salmon. By keeping them busy with false doctrine. No. You have to gather them, bring prostitutes, bring the blind, bring the lame, bring the thief, bring them. Bring them together and show them the love of God. Tell them the Lord does not condemn them, so nobody is condemning them. Tell them to come out from there. They should separate themselves. According to the word of the Lord, say, be come out of there, be ye separate, and touch not on cleansing. Tell them how they have been involved with the things that are unclean. That the Lord desired them to come out and be made whole. So that they can be among those that will occupy the kingdom of God with Jesus Christ. This is just the word of repentance. Tell them to come out. Let those that do drugs do, the, do it no more. Let those that prostitute prostitute no more. Tell them the consequences. Because the Lord said when you defy your body he will destroy Tell them, those that do arm robbery business, tell them to come out and do it no more. Because where their soul will go, when they die, is not, it is not a good place that they even want to hear. Tell them, those that are involved in rituals, tell them not to do it again. They should, they should ask for mercy and come out of it, renounce it. Tell them those in evil association they should come out of it, renounce it. This is the good news that the Lord is sending every one of us. So why are you not saying it? Why are you placing money first? What makes you talk? What makes you believe that the that they are in that their state, in that their arm robbery or the drugs that they do or the prostitution as they bring from that money and give to God? Their soul is already saved. Why it make you think that that money is even accepted before God? It is not accepted. It's a polluted money. It's a polluted offering. It's a polluted offering. It's not accepted. You want to see it? Go to Haggai chapter 1. Go to Malachi chapter 1. Read it and see what God said. 
They, they say they offered polluted offering. That money is not accepted. So do not be deceived. You are only feeding the stomach of, a, of your pastor. That money is not accepted. Because it is, it is, it is polluted. It is made in, you, you, you got that money. It's an ill-gotten money. The Lord is not interested in your money. The Lord is not interested in that money. You are the offering the Lord desire first. You are the first offering. That is why he said, I plead with you. Paul was saying, brethren, I plead with you that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He said, do not be conformed with this word. Do not follow the things of this word. You go to church, they don't tell you you need to separate. There must be a demarcation between a Christian and a believer. Bible says, what has light got to do with darkness? What has light got to do with darkness? James chapter 4 verse 4 B says, a friend of this world is an enemy of God. You can't be here, be here. Tell them what it means to be a child of God. You must separate yourself. You must make yourself holy. Acceptable to God. Do you know why we are coming to say this? We are not coming to say this because we want to deceive you people. We are not, we are not coming to say this because we want to be known. We are not coming to say, say this because we want your money. We have never asked you to, to give us a dollar. We are not coming to say this because we want to be famous. No. We are coming to say this because the Lord said we should go and warn the world of the torments that await disobedient children. Of the torment in her fire. The Lord said we should go and warn the world. Tell them because they have surprised my truth. He said they have surprised that the truth in, in the churches today. So a lot of people think they are already with they are already there in my kingdom. He said they are not because they profess with their mouth they love me, but their heart is far. Their ways do not conform with what. Is required of them in my kingdom. Go and warn them. Tell them to live a holy life. Tell them to flee from any kind of sin. Because I am a holy God. Because I am a righteous God, I cannot behold iniquity. He said for this reason, he came to give himself for you, for me. So that we can have life eternal life don't you understand we are strangers in this world how many years does a man spend on this earth how many years does a man spend on this earth a man's lifespan is no more than 100 right now that is if he's still up to a man's lifespan is no more than 100 right now that is if he's still up to after that where will your soul go <laughs> It is appointed for men to die once after death is judgment. I don't know why the world, people these days do not even fear their soul. When a man dies, they tell you, he is resting. He has gone to rest with the Lord. When a man dies, when anybody dies, they say he has gone to be with the Lord. Can you really stand when the Lord open your eyes where they are? If they don't live a life that is pleasing unto them. Where you end is determined by this book. This is a, a book of life. It's our life manual. Where your soul is going determined by this book. No, not by the doctrine of your pastor. Oh, perhaps you have been there in that church. That is the church your grandfather went. That is the church your father went. And that is the church you are going right now. It doesn't, it will not save your soul. The name of the church you attend cannot save your soul. The name of your pastor cannot save your soul. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. I said by him. Jesus is the way. He didn't say he, he is one of the ways, or oh, he come, he will show you the way. 
He is the way. He is the one you need to follow. He is the one you need to obey. We say we, we are Christian today. We lift our holy hands. Our heart is filthy. Our heart is evil. Iniquity is, it has taken up our heart. We hate that the other person. We carry bitterness, unforgiveness in our heart. You say you will not forgive that person. You will not forgive that man. You will not forgive that woman. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Hatred. Envy. All this cannot occupy your heart. And you say they are going to is you are going to be with the Lord. It's not possible. It is not my word, it's written in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. It says, No liars, the fearful, the unbelieving liars, murderers, fornicators, adulterers, sorcerers, wickedness. He said, None we enter his kingdom. That's the word of the Lord. You accept some, you accept some verses in this Bible, and you don't accept some on this Bible. How is that one possible? You accept because your pastor said you are going to get rich this week. You accept. Your pastor said it is well with you this week. Oh, of course, it is well with you. You accept. Your pastor said you are going to be favored this week. You accept. Your pastor said. Doors of opportunity, help us, we locate you this week. You are set. You shout, Amen. Then, the same book is telling you, live a holy life without living a holy life. You will not see God. You say, oh, don't, you don't start. Don't judge me. You have started. They judge a lot. You reject that. The same book says, masturbation. When you practice masturbation, you will not see the, the face of Jesus. You say, oh, stop it. Don't judge me. The same book says, gay, lesbian, transgender, when you are part of them, except you repent, you will not see the kingdom of God. You said, oh, shut up. Who are you to judge? We are very quick to accept the good parts of the Bible. But the truth the bitter truth is very offensive in our ears. The bitter truth said, leave this your evil association. If you are a witch, you are a wizard. If you are in the Marine Spirit Kingdom, you are in the occult. The Lord said, because you have a, a filthy spirit in you. He said, his kingdom is not for unclean people. Go and renounce that association. If you are a ritualist, go and confess your sin to Jesus, the blood that you have shed. Perhaps if you have done abortion, you are an abortionist, go and, go and confess to Jesus, the innocent babies that you have killed. Ask for mercy from the Lord so that he can forgive you, so that he can forgive us. That is why his love if you are defrauding people, go and ask for mercy and ask the Lord to forgive you. If you know that you have you have destroyed that marriage with your lies or you have you have contributed to that separation of that marriage, go and confess to that man, to that woman and ask for mercy. If you know that you are dating a married woman that is even your, your, your best friend's husband. You better stop it today. Stop it today. And you man, if you are dating your, your, your friend's wife, stop it today. These are the things that they are supposed to be rebuking you of in the church. That when you come back, you are, you are, you are quiet. Your spirit is quiet because you know, because you just knew the truth. You just got to, you just heard the truth in the church today. So you are looking for how to amend your ways. 
asking for mercy. This is how we are supposed to believe. I'm not saying you should live a sad life. No. The joy, he has given us joy unspeakable. But there are steps that you have taken that is not right before God. Why are we saying this? For the salvation of your soul. Because we all know our date of birth. But nobody knows what will happen in the evening time. This is just past 12 here in the afternoon. I do not know what will happen in the evening. It could be evening in, 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 in your country. You do not know what will happen the next day. That is why we are supposed to amend our ways and do restitution where necessary and live a holy life. There were 10 veggies, five, Bible recorded that five were wise, five were foolish. The wise ones had their lamp extra, they had extra lamp. Meaning they were not doing as the, the, the others were doing. Others, they were, they were, they were burning their, their lamp without having extra. Be wise in these last days. Be wise. Search for the truth. Look for the truth. It is only the truth that can save you. Don't you even know that all this that you are engaging yourself in, they bring affliction, they bring sickness and disease. You are just fasting and binding for nothing. You are casting demons for nothing. You know the you 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 know you know the, the reason of those sickness and diseases. You know it. You know it. You are just giving pastors assignment, telling them to pray for you. You can't disobey God and you expect the blessings of God. It's the cause that we come. The Lord said, let man, man from the beginning here, he made man and woman. But in society say, man and man is okay, woman and woman is okay. And the Lord said, he gave them to reprobate mind. Meaning all the affliction, all the sickness, all the diseases you can ever think of in this world. We come upon that person. And they don't even care about it. It's not about the sickness and disease, it's about your soul. Let us amend our ways today. Whatsoever you know you are doing that is not right before God. Change your ways. Your dressing that you are using to seduce people. Change your ways. It is not, it is not, it, God does not like it. Because whoever that you are seducing with your with that dressing, you are going to account for that blood. That innocent blood. Change your ways. For most of you women that are still on these worldly things. Go and read what the word of God says. Change your ways. That is why you might not like our preaching, but it's just the truth. We come here to deliver the truth and we go. The fact that we deliver the truth does not mean that we are there. No. The fact that we deliver the truth does not mean that we are righteous. I'm, I'm holy. I'm already there. We will work out your salvation. I am working out my, my salvation. I'm running my race. I'm striving. We strive every day. We strive every day. Because the road is narrow. Bible says the road is narrow. Straight. The road is narrow. Matthew chapter 7. The road is narrow. You must, you must strive not to miss that road. You must strive not to miss that road. Bible describes these two sides to your eternal life. But they don't read this to you in the church. You don't seem to don't know this in the church. That is why on that day you will not tell God I did not know. He will tell you my word. Is there the, the Holy Bible? Matthew chapter 7, starting from verse 13. Let's read verse 13 and 14. Enter ye at the straight gate, for the wide is the gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many... There be which go in there of many. The road that little destruction. Bible says many. 
there be that follow it. The road of destruction is wide, it's smooth, it's free of traffic. It doesn't even have traffic lights, so you don't need to break. It's ahead, ahead, very wide. And many are leading, are passing the road. Because it's so smooth, they feel they're already on their way to heaven. That is the deception from Satan. Look at verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Compare the two. Verse 13 said, wide is the way that leads to destruction. Verse 14 says, narrow is the way. Which leaded unto life are few, only few, only few, only few there be that find it, only few be that find it. Have you ever wondered why we God use plenty many that are headed to destruction and few? That discover the, the 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 narrow path. That is the truth. What be done? Hook it. Hook it. Yeah. What is it? Hey, if you can pick it, be careful. You sure is have you checked the name? Did you check the name? Which name is there? Sorry. <laughs> have you confirmed the name? Okay. Yes. Did you confirm the name? Hook it. Hook it up. Yes. What is the Bible telling us today? Narrow is the way. Straight is the gate that lead to eternal life. Only few that find it. And wide, broad is the way that lead to destruction. A lot of people are passing. A lot of people are passing to it. That is why we have to be careful in locating this path, this way. Where does the Bible says only few that pass this narrow way? Because of this word of truth, only few they will hear. Only few we do this word of truth. Only few we do we do what, what the word of God says. Why? Because the truth is bitter. The truth is offensive. The truth brings anger to the carnal mind. The truth brings it is it's so it's so it's so annoying to the carnal mind. They tell you who is she? Please just take I, I don't even want to do you why do you listen to her? They preach false doctrine. <laughs> We have we have been we have been using the word of God since that is what the Bible says. Narrow is the gate and straight is the way. May the Lord help us. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life and few there be that find it. Enter, he said, but verse 13, enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction. That is why you see a lot of people today, right now, I, uh, they are the idols. They are idol worshippers without knowing it. Because they have gone, they have modernized it right now, that they worship idols in the church. That is, yeah, that is why you see a lot of people right now, all to this day, with this word of truth, they are still putting, they are still wearing rosaries. What has rosary got to do with your soul? You wear rosary, you wear your children rosary. Who is in that rosary? 
What has that got to do with your soul? That is why you see a lot of people today, they carry their church handband with the, church, the, with the name of their church written on it. That alone, they feel, can save them anywhere they go. They are already there. That is why you see a lot of people today right now, they carry their church mantle with the, with the, with the, with the picture of their pastor on it. Handkerchief. They carry it everywhere. Car sticker. Carrying the name of their church. They stick it on the, on, on, on the, on the car. They stick it on their doorpost. They put their pastor's picture in their city room. Don't you know what they have told you to? You are an idolater. You don't need to worship a graven image. You are an idolater. The very fact that you are placing that image before God have made you an idolater. God said, you shall love him with the whole of your heart, with the whole of your soul, with the whole of your mind. That is the greatest commandment. And loving your neighbor as yourself. When Paul used apron, that mantle that they have, be that have become a material, a demonic material today in church, because Paul was healing people, he could not go where people were waiting. He removed it and gave them. Just go and lay it on them. And that was the only time Paul used it. Paul never idolized it. He never used it again. But they would go and bring mantle from their shrine today and start giving people. You already hypnotized. They bring water today. They call it holy water. They bring oil today. They bring all kinds of candles today. Whatever materials, evil materials you can ever think of. Do not give holy thing to the dogs. They have, they have misused the offices God has placed them. They have made the church right now a shrine. They have brought shrine to the church. If you, are, if you are in such place, live there. Live there. Go and serve God in holiness and in righteousness. The Bible says, Thou shalt know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Thou shalt know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Yes, you can see me talking like this because I was there. Until my eyes opened, I was there. I got entangled with the, with the things of, of church, material things. They will get you busy with all kinds of activities. Men anniversary, women anniversary, whatever, children anniversary. You keep paying, paying, paying. Nobody will tell you where your soul will end. You keep paying all sorts. You pay this today, you pay that today, tomorrow. They give us matto, I tie it to my neck. We tie it to our hand. They give us all sorts of all this. Rituals, ritual material materials. Take them off your home. Those days it was not God, it was about the the the, the, the pastor and what they, they, they gave us. We never knew the true word until we made do with all those all those things until we started praying to Jesus Christ to reveal himself to us. Then he came down. And said, if your hand caught it to sin, remove it. It is better you enter to my kingdom. Name than your body go into hell fire. Jesus Christ came to, to one man of hell fire than heaven. So I don't see any reason why they will not warn you of hell fire. Because hell fire is real. The way they are, they, are, they are preaching to you that you are in heaven. They should also preach to you that if you disobey God, that you are going to hell fire. And, what, and you, there are some things you must do to miss hell fire. You must live a holy life. You must not lie. You must not fornicate. Stay. If you want to marry, marry. Don't commit adultery. Don't start practicing masturbation. Because you don't have a girlfriend, you don't have a boyfriend. You're already practicing it to yourself. No. Don't engage yourself in this gay lesbianism. Don't do drugs. Don't go to clubs. You are you stay in the club, night club from morning till night. And on Sunday you are going to church. Who are you really? Where do you place yourself? Learn how to trust God. Do not lie. Let go anger, bitterness, hate, unforgiveness. You are bitter about someone. Let it go. Learn how to love. Learn how to forgive. Let, let it go. Learn how to love. Learn how to forgive. 
for you that is doing prostitution, come out of it. Because that place, high fire, is not a place that you even wish your enemy to go. That is where fire do not quench. Worms don't die. Go to Mark chapter 9, verses 43 to 48. Go and read Mark chapter 9, verse, verses 43 to 48. Jesus Christ analyzed it there where. He said where you where you will be born from from there. Let me let me go there. See if I'm speaking too much. Mark chapter 9. He said, if your hand called it to sin, and if thy hand called it to sin, if if the hand called, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off, it is better for thee to enter into life made than thy two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall quench. Fire in hell does not quench. And the worms where they are warm died not, and the fire is never quenched. He repeated it. Fire does not quench. Worms don't do not die in hell fire. They, 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 warm, they enter somebody's head to toe. Please confirm from your Bible. I'm not reading my own personal Bible. I didn't go and and, and, and produce this. Go to Mark chapter uh, uh, 9 from verses 43 to 14, 48. They will not tell you this in the church because they, 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 they prefer your money to your soul. Learn this. This is the word of Jesus Christ that can never return to him void. He said, if your hand caused you to sin, remove, uh, cut it off. He said, the symbolic statement, when he said, cut it off, does not mean you should get a gun or the cutlass and take it off. No. He said, you should discipline it as you repent from what you are doing with that hand. Repent from what you are doing with that leg. If that your leg is taking you to a club, stop it. If that your leg is, is taking you to uh, uh, on, on place and places, stop it. If your leg is taking, to, taking you to where you, you are robbing people off, stop it. That's what Jesus Christ is talking about. He said, where the fire does not quench, where the worms don't die. The fire is from everlasting from there, from fire, fire to lake of fire. You, we, 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 we hate to hear this, but it's the truth. We hate to hear this, but it's the truth. Thou shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, we are going to ask. We are going to ask for mercy. Let's ask the Lord to have mercy. In any area we have disobeyed his word. In any area we have not been following his word. In any area we have been so disobedient. In any area we have occupied our hearts with worldly things more than him. In any area we are attached to social media. You chart your life away. On internet, you are on uh, Facebook, you are on, on Snapchat, you are on uh, WhatsApp, you are on Twitter. You are on different, You instead of you having fellowship with Jesus, you are on social media. You don't even have an altar in your house where you, you, you bring your family together to pray or to study the word of God. You are going out of the way of the Lord. You are drifting out of the path of Jesus Christ. Ask for mercy today and come back. Ask for mercy today and come back. We, are, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have spread the holy things right now to the dogs. But it's never too late. We can come back to our path. We can come back. We can retrieve our steps back to the path of Jesus Christ. Where we shall be delivered. Where we shall be saved. Because the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. They are saved. It is only God that can save you. It is only God that can save me. I cannot save myself. You cannot save yourself. He is the one that has the keys of hell and death in his hand. According to his word in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. So why won't you cry to Jesus for mercy? This is why you have to come to him today. Before we, 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 we conclude this, this uh, program, if you know that you have gone contrary to the will of God, you want God to have mercy on you, say this after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. Wash away my iniquities. Lord, out my transgression. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for having mercy and, com and compassion on me. Father, help me to know you more and more. Help me to follow you on this path of righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you know that you have said that, that, that you have made that confession, do not go back to the word. This is just the beginning. All you need to do, the next thing is to remove whatsoever you know is not of God in your life. Because when you know Jesus, there must be an identity in you. It is not, you don't need to start saying, telling everybody I'm a born again. There is 
an identity that when people see you, they will know. So whatsoever you know that have been in your life that is not of God, is it stealing? Is it sexual immorality? Is it drinking? Is it smoking? Stop it. I know you are going to, I know it's not going to be easy, but you, are, you have to pray to God to help you. That is where the Holy Spirit comes in. You cannot do it on your own. It's the Holy Spirit that can help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, to deliver you from this, from, uh, from, from, from this, your habit. Ask him to deliver you. He will help you. That is number one. Then you start studying the word of God. Look for the preaching that will nourish your soul. Look for holiness and righteousness preachers that you will follow. Not all these church activities that you see today. They have polluted the body of Jesus Christ by worldliness. They preach money, money, money. Money has entered people's head that they don't, they have even forgotten their soul. No, it is a personal work. Look for preaching that will nourish your spirit man, where you will start aligning, doing the things that the Lord wants you to do. That is how you walk in this path. That is how you walk in this path. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. I just want to thank every one of you for being part of this program today. Today is a Saturday. By 2 o'clock, we have a children's program. It's almost 1. By 2, New York time, we have children's program. Tomorrow, the servant of God will be coming live on Family Worship Hour. Just want to thank God this author of prayer fellowship. Please, I'm on my personal page today. I came on my personal, I came on the on author of prayer fellowship page instead of my personal page. So please like this page and follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The next week, we say God bless you. May the Lord open doors of opportunity to each and every one of you this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will grant your heart desire, even as you seek in holiness and righteousness. The Lord will grant your heart desire. Whatever you lay your hands on this week shall prosper for you. You will not sorrow or mourn and, or, uh, uh, over any member of your family. Never. Bad news is not your portion. Never. The Lord will open doors of opportunity. To you. Destiny help us. will locate you wherever you may be from the east, in the west, south, north, in the name of Jesus Christ. The good Lord will make every quicker pass straight for you this week in the name of Jesus Christ. The good Lord will make all the lines to continue to fall onto you in pleasant places this week in the name of Jesus Christ. You will occupy anywhere you go to this week in the name of Jesus Christ. We just want to thank God. We bless, we, we bless God for today. We appreciate him. We say may his name be praised forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, this is Evelyn Akigbe coming live to you in Auto of Prayer Fellowship. The next week, Saturday, this is saying goodbye. Shalom. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.